this is Dr. Murchison. Who? Oh, yes, Miss Kramer. You what? Well, of course. Come over right away. Who? Very well, then. Bring the sheriff with you. I wanted Dr. Fleurot here when you came, Miss Kramer. I wanted him to hear your story, too. You see, technically, I'm no longer associated with this sanatorium. I don't see what difference it makes. None, perhaps, Sheriff. Uh, go on, Miss Kramer. I've been in Dr. Edwards' office for years, and the man who spoke to me on the telephone is not Dr. Edwards. He let me have my vacation when he left on his. But I was very worried when I didn't hear from him. Then I thought he might have come directly here. That's why I telephoned. Show them that photograph of Dr. Edwards. Oh. Oh, yes. Yes. Here. That certainly isn't our Dr. Edwards. What do you suppose made him break down last night? It's obvious now. Garms, that uh, patient I told you about. I'm almost certain our Dr. Edwards is an amnesia case. Garms brought him back to reality for an instant, and being unable to face the truth of who he was, he collapsed. You think he may have killed the real Dr. Edwards, eh? It's quite possible. And then took his place to conceal the crime. Uh, this sort of unrealistic act is typical of the short-sighted cunning that goes with paranoid behavior. Oh, good morning, Dr. Murchison. Dr. Fleurot, is... is anything wrong? I'm afraid so, Constance. Oh, uh, this gentleman with us is the sheriff. Sheriff? Uh, Dr. Edwards turns out to be a paranoid imposter, very likely guilty of having murdered the real Edwards. But he's disappeared. Disappeared? He's not in his room? We've looked everywhere, Connie. You left him in his room, miss. When? Uh, late last night, but... Well, he may still be around here somewhere. Excuse me, I better phone for some deputies. Don't worry, Connie. It's not your fault that he got away. They're bound to find him. I don't agree, Dr. Fleur. I don't think they will find him. Not alive. Why not? An amnesia case like this? With the police after him? The fellow will put an end to his pain, to his nightmare fantasies, by blowing out his brains or dropping out of a window. No. Why? Well, I didn't mean to be so callous about it, Constance. Your guess is probably quite accurate. Come along, Thoreau. Suicide. No. No. Hello? Uh, Mr. Brown is calling you, Dr. Peterson. Brown? John Brown, doctor. Long distance. Put him on, please. Hello? Where are you? Doesn't matter. You'll find a note under your carpet. Thanks for trying. Hello? Hello? I cannot involve you in this for many reasons. One of them being that I love you. When the police step in, tell them I'm at the Riverside Hotel in New York. I prefer to wait alone for the end. late that same day, in a room in the Riverside Hotel in New York City. How did you come here? Why? To take care of you. To help you. You can't help a criminal. I won't allow you to. I couldn't bear it away from you. I couldn't do anything but think oh, of it. No, 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 no. I'm here as your doctor. It has nothing to do with love. Hmm. Nothing at all. Hmm? Oh, darling. Darling. Constant. You see? Nothing to do with love at all. <laughs> Darling, we haven't much time. You lived somewhere. You had relatives, friends. Please try to remember. Why not a wife? Can you remember her? No, no, thank heavens I can't remember a wife. You told me you had headaches. How would you diagnose a pain in the right upper quadrant? A persistent pain? Oh, gallbladder, possibly a heart case, pneumonia. Depends on the patient's history. Obviously, you are a doctor. The only thing that's obvious is the logic of the situation. What logic? That it was I who was with Dr. Edwards here. Look at this newspaper. Police believe the imposter who escaped from Green Manors is the patient who visited the real Dr. Edwards in the Cumberland Mountains. No trace of Dr. Edwards has been found since he left the Cumberland Resort in the company of his alleged patient. Where did you go? I don't know. But I came back with his identity. And logically, I know why the body hasn't been found. Because... 
It was hidden by me. Don't you see you can be imagining all this? You insist without proof that you're a murderer. Whoever you are, it's a guilt complex that speaks for you. A guilt fantasy that probably goes back to your childhood. Your wrist. What about my wrist? Roll up your sleeve. You were in an accident. Your wrist was burned. Your forearm. You've had an operation in the last six months. A skin graft. Yes. It hurts. What happened? Where? My wrist hurts. What happened? It's burning. My arm's burning. Try. Try to remember. No, I can't think. I can't. I... <sighs> Darling. Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you all right? Oh, I... I'm all right. Who could that be? Uh, the bellboy. I left word I wanted the late editions of the newspapers. I'll go. Bellboy, Mr. Brown. Oh, yes, the papers. Here, thank you. Huh? Oh. Oh, yes, ma'am. Thanks. Still on the front page? Yes, it's my picture. Your picture. Police hunt Dr. Constance Peterson. Believed aiding madman in Edward's mystery. The bellboy recognized me. We've got to live here. Now, at once. There's no time even to pack. You told the cab driver Pennsylvania Station. Yes, darling, yes. Listen, when you left the Cumberland Mountains, Dr. Edwards was with you. You went somewhere else, together. By automobile, I, I doubt it. The newspaper would have mentioned it. By plane, maybe. Or by train. However you went, you bought tickets. You must have heard Dr. Edwards ask for tickets. I, I, I don't remember. But you will. We'll go to a ticket window. Try to relive that other time with Edwards. Ask for the same tickets. I'll, I'll try, I'll try. All right, please. Who is next? Washington, one way. You went someplace with Edwards. Ask for tickets to that same place. 46, including tax, thank you. Yes, sir. Tickets. Tickets to where, sir? Two tickets. Two tickets where to? Rome. Rome. Where? He, he means Rome, Georgia. Yes, ma'am. Just a moment, please. I, I feel so pe peculiar. Please, darling. The policeman is coming. Don't say anything. Anything wrong, lady? My, my husband's ill, officer. Here you are, ma'am. Two tickets to Rome, Georgia. You need any help? Oh, no, he'll be all right. Those busy spells go away quickly. Your change, ma'am. Birmingham Special, track 17 in 10 minutes. Thank you. I'll go to the train with you. Oh, no, he's better now, officer. Please don't bother. Track 17's right over there. We've got to get to an exit. Exit? The policeman. He may find a description of us posted somewhere. We'll be picked up at the first stop. We can't go back to the hotel. No, darling. We'll go to Grand Central Station. We're going to Rochester. Rochester. I have a wonderful friend there, Dr. Alex Bruloff. He was my professor at the university. He'll help us. Feel better? Oh, much better, thanks. Then let's pick up where we left off. We know you're a doctor, that you were in an accident, that you were once in Rome. I was never in Rome in my life. I... Yes. I... I remember. Fighter plane spotted us. You were flying. Transport medical corps over Rome. What happened? Plane was hit, caught fire. Go on. I... I, I, I don't know. It, it, it just blacks out. You left the army after that? Maybe I deserted. I hated it. I hated the killing. I can remember that much. Your guilt fantasies were exaggerated by your duties in the army. Stop it. Stop it, please. I, I don't want to hear any more about it. Darling... We're just beginning. Don't hate me too much. Try to relax now. I'll tell you all about Alex, Dr. Bulo. Oh, you'll be crazy about it. Constance! see you again, my dear. Alex, oh, you're busy. I should have let you know we were coming. And ruined this wonderful surprise. Now, who is this man? You are bringing me a new patient? Oh, no. This one's all mine. His name is John Brown. He's my husband, Alex. We were just married. Very glad to know you, Dr. Brulon. So, so, married. You know who is waiting for me in there? Two policemen. 
Policeman? This business about Dr. Edwards. They are here to ask me foolish questions. I get rid of them very fast now. I'm sure they didn't see us coming. I'm not going to run away again. Sure, we can hear what they're saying. I told the police before. I know nothing about it. Well, I have some kind of a theory, Doctor. I said if Edwards took a paranoid patient along with him on a vacation, he was even a bigger fool than I thought he was. It's like playing with a loaded gun. Was Edwards a friend of yours? What are you talking about? I scarcely knew him. Now, please, no, no more questions. Sorry to have bothered you, Doctor. Good night. Oh, good night. Good night. 